Hi, my name is uh, Freddy Kwan. I work for Rambus. I'm a senior principal engineer over there and I take care of the uh, backend functions of the company, basically synthesis, placement route, all the way to GDS2. At Rambus, we recently worked on a project where we got silicon back from the foundry and we discovered that there was a logical bug in it that uh, prevented one of the major functions of the design to work properly. Our logic design team uh, quickly identified a solution to the bug and uh, schedule was the most important thing in this particular project because we wanted to deliver samples to the customer as fast as possible. So the logic changes that were identified to uh, fix a problem that we discovered, if we were to do it manually, it was something that was going to take a, a long time. A as a matter of fact, we were not, the, the changes were complicated enough that we didn't know if we're going to be able to make all the changes. Um, also, because schedule was important, we wanted to turn this around. I if we actually implemented the change in a metal-only change, you know, our turnaround time would actually be only two months. But if we had to go down to implementing all of the base layers, that would actually take six months. Uh, ideally, because of schedule, you know, the metal-only change would probably be the most efficient. All right, so the main challenges that we faced in this approach was that we were gonna be doing this manually. And doing it manually entailed us grabbing the synthesized netlist with the new RTL and trying to figure out what changed between the new RTL and what actually got taped out. And the problem was that during synthesis, a lot of the internal nodes that change in the RTL get generic names to them once they get synthesized. And mapping those changes to the to what actually got taped out to get one netlist to be compatible with the other, it, it's a lot of like trial and error. So that would take a lot of time. As a matter of fact, we, we didn't really know if we we're gonna be able to achieve that in a timely fashion. So it became obvious to us that we needed to find a better solution to this kind of problem because we knew that we were gonna encounter it again. Uh, at that moment, we decided to evaluate Caden's tool, Conformally CO, to see what capabilities they had to solve this kind of issues. Uh, it, at that point in time, you know, we were able to um, run the tool and it was able to achieve the same results that we had in about a day as opposed to a week. And we actually got better timing results on it. Another advantage that we get from using the tool is that it allows us to implement more complex ECLs. If we're doing it manually, we are by default trying to do something simpler, uh, maybe not a, a complete fix, but just a workaround to the problem that we were having so that it'd be easier to implement in a timely fashion. Uh, on the other hand, you know, if we have conformal ECO, we could afford to having a more complex ECO that may actually fix the problem the correct way. Uh, we also have the advantage that if we are doing this manually, we need a logic designer to be involved to do the, the logic fixes, we need somebody who does synthesis, uh, place route engineer, maybe even a conformal and, and static timing analysis tool and a lot of other stuff. Uh, but if we're using conformal ECO, it actually automates a lot of the steps, so it makes it possible for just one engineer to implement all of these changes.